Hi there, I'm Dre, the host and founder of The Dragon Network. Welcome to this week's video. On my channel, we talk about all things that are related to healthcare IT, and today I would like to touch on the topic of care equality. So Care Equality, which is a nonprofit organization, is a national level consensus built interoperability framework to enable exchange between and among health information networks and service platforms. So there are several different interoperability frameworks, ideas and concepts that are currently in development or in use across the United States. So there's a significant push to improve the interoperability and the data exchange between systems in health sectors around the world. And this is because it's becoming more and more evident that in order to care for an entire person's health and well-being and to serve our populations the best, it's important that all of the clinicians, all of the support staff, and all the appropriate administrative staff have access to information about their patients at the right time, in the right place, and for the right purpose. And in order for that to happen, some of that data needs to be exchanged between systems. Now, there's been some significant struggles with exchanging data back and forth. Some of that relates to technology and some of it just relates to the actual workflows and the rules and the legal parameters around exchanging such sensitive data. And some of the organizations that are trying to help this are working in tandem with different government organizations and different healthcare entities to try to make it a little bit easier. Care Equality is one of those organizations. So it was originally something that was started as an initiative of the Sequoia Project back in 2014, but it since has become its own nonprofit entity. So one of the best ways to describe the challenges that the Care Equality framework is trying to overcome is by utilizing an example of cellular telephones. So this is something that they use frequently in their presentations as well as in their online documentation. So if I don't do a great job explaining this, you're encouraged to check out the Care Equality website and they can hopefully break it down a little bit better. But the gist of the example is if you could imagine that cellular providers only had the ability to communicate between individuals that were on their network. So AT&T could only connect with other AT&T users. And on top of that, that the particular device holders could only also communicate with other individuals who had the same device. So not only would people that were connected to Sprint be able to communicate with only other Sprint customers, but they would only be able to communicate with other Sprint customers that had their device. So iPhone to iPhone, only on Sprint. An iPhone on Sprint couldn't connect to one on Verizon or one on AT&T. So this example is what has been illustrated as the challenge that exists in healthcare today or between many healthcare organizations and entities as far as exchanging data goes. So if they are on the same network and they are using the same interoperability standards, then that works great. They can actually exchange data fairly easily between each other. So if we consider, for example, multiple health organizations that are connected to a single HIE, they can exchange data between each other as long as they're on the same HIE. We can also look at it as far as the same quote unquote device type if we look at someone like Epic. So Epic can communicate fairly easily with other Epic organizations because they're on the same system and they're using the same language to talk back and forth. But when an Epic client tries to talk to a Cerner client, especially if they're not on the same HIE or the same trusted exchange network, it becomes incredibly difficult. So this is the landscape that Care Quality is going after. So let's look at how they're trying to do that. The Care Quality framework has three essential elements that they're actually trying to make sure are in place and are well adhered to, to have this interoperable exchange network really work. And those three things are common rules of the road. So in order for participants in a Care Quality framework to be able to trust each other with the exchange of data, they have to have legal agreements that indicate that they are going to follow the same rules. So it can't just be about agreeing to follow the same principles and the same guidelines. This is going to take it a step further and Care Quality actually has an agreement that is a legally binding document that all participants need to sign to say, yes, I am going to follow these guidelines and rules that have been put in place by the organization. So the second one is well-defined technical specs. 
So in order to exchange data between different entities, especially when they're on different systems, there's got to be some very clearly defined standards that are going to be used to exchange that data. So not only the exchange transport methods, but also the actual structured data standards. So it's not enough to just have these available and defined as the standards. There actually needs to be implementation guidelines and assistance in place for all those that are participating to be able to make sure that they can actually utilize these standards appropriately and implement them in their systems so that they can exchange with the greater population. The third one is a participant directory. So the other challenge of exchanging data between organizations is often you're trying to exchange data with an organization that you may have never exchanged data with before. So patients don't tend to follow your idea of where exactly they should go for everything. They actually have the ability to go to multiple different areas, multiple different care providers, and multiple different organizations. And if they do that and the data is needed and is relevant for their care, you should be able to get that data in that standard format from anywhere they go, even if you haven't connected to them before. So if a patient comes and indicates that they need to get their records from somewhere that you haven't connected with before, part of the care equality framework is actually to set up a directory that indicates the roles of the organizations that are in there as well as the addresses for connection. So the direct connection addresses or the direct exchange information. The care equality framework currently has over 600,000 providers participating as well as 50,000 clinics or a little over 50,000 clinics and 2,800 hospitals are actually signed up to do this. So again, they have that legal agreement that says, I'm gonna abide by the rules of the road. I'm gonna follow the standards that are put in place. I'm gonna use your implementation guide to do it. And I'm gonna make sure my information's in the participant directory so we can exchange data appropriately when necessary and within all the privacy and security requirements that are needed with other participants in the care equality group. So here's a look at some of the participating entities that are currently signed on. You're going to see familiar logos from some pretty significant EHR providers as well as some payer organizations, some outpatient or ambulatory clinic EMR providers, as well as some other groups within the healthcare space such as integration organizations like Blue Dog. So with all the information that needs to go into developing the implementation guides and the standards and really communicating that out through those legal agreements with the participating entities, the care equality framework is currently focused on two different use cases. So the first is query-based document exchange, and that really addresses the need where you need to obtain relevant information on a patient that you're currently looking after from another provider or from another entity. And the second one is electronic case reporting. And this one is actually in place to assist with public health type reporting. So if there's information needed on a larger scale to track reportable health conditions, that this information can also be exchanged using the care equality framework. So that was just a very brief overview of what the framework is, what the intent behind it is, and really how the conceptual structure of it works. So if you're interested in finding out more about care equality and what this really is, and whether or not this is something that your organization participates in or something that your organization might be interested in participating in, I'm going to put the link to the Care Equality organization below and I encourage you to look into it a little bit more. So that's all we have for today's video. I hope that you found it helpful. As always, if you like the types of stuff I'm posting, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on. Talk to you next week.